Tonight, I'm going to give a sampling from three books that are in our libraries, the Fleming School and the Oakleaf School. And then we can discuss, you can discuss, the process by which these books get on the shelves, because there's a Clay County employee that got paid to put this book, Lucky, by Alice Sebold. <clears throat> I'm going to read things. If there's children watching, cover their ears. He began to need I'm going to stop you right there, sir. Opening. I'm going to stop you right there. Turn the microphone off. Turn off his microphone, please. I've told you I'm stopping you. The reason I'm stopping you is because these meetings are, if you'll hush your mouth for a minute and listen, instead of just talking, you may only learn something. Well, the problem is, sir, is these meetings are broadcast. There are people at home that are watching it on YouTube. There are people that are watching it on community television. Are you going to listen or are you going to run your mouth? And you'll get it back, but you'll get it back to talk about something besides reading pornography into a, a public television set. Well, let me explain something to you. There are federal and state laws that prohibit you from saying the things that you're getting ready to say on television. There are state laws that prohibit, and federal communications laws, that prohibit you from publishing these things to a child. You don't have the you don't have the ability at this point to determine who's watching the television show, and for you to say everybody cover your ears just doesn't cut it. If you go to if if you go to television and you look before anything that comes on that's offensive, they have it graded as R, NC-17, PG, or G, or X. Now, if if you Put something on the television without that. You are violating state and federal law. I am going to read you an assignment given to my 15-year-old daughter at a local high school. This will be horrifying for me to read to you, but that will give you perspective on how she must have felt when her teacher required her to memorize this and to act it out in front of her entire class. I don't love you. It's not you. It's just, I don't like your dick, or any dick in that case. I cheated, Joe. I'm sorry. This is propaganda. Forgive me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I don't. Thank you so much for your, thank you for your uh, comment. Forgive me. I, we're not using profanity. Are you? Okay. What? That's relevant. I Okay. Yes. The teacher this, this... required my daughter to read, memorize this, and read this pornographic material. Uh, excuse me. Please don't engage with the audience. Okay. Uh, sorry, so my please continue your public comment. Your your time is. You've got one at one minute and nineteen seconds. Um, I ask you simply. This is a public meeting. I ask for decorum, um, and I'm asking, Dr. Jara. Thank you so much, Dr. Jara. I do, if you don't want me to read it to you, what was that like for my 15-year-old daughter to have to memorize pornographic material and um, and yeah. memorize it and portray Madam President, Thanks. members of the board staffs on this, um, we can have the region superintendent speak. To her. Thank you so we much, Dr. Jara. It seems like you may have some concerns, and while we're not uh, allowed to engage back and forth in a dialogue, we would absolutely like to make sure that your concerns are addressed. This material, just finish what I was gonna say. Please. My daughter was forced to engage in the portrayal of this blank activity by her teacher. We have pornography laws regarding minors in this state and many of those were violated because of this assignment. I don't have time to, to name all of the laws that were broken that day, but one example, NRS 200-710. It states, it is a crime when a person knowingly uses, encourages, entices, or permits a minor to be the subject of a sexual portrayal in a performance. In one of my meetings with school administration, they blamed my daughter for not saying no to the assignment. They blamed my daughter, who is the victim. Teachers are in a position of power. Educators must understand the laws about sexual abuse, and that is where I am hoping you will help. If I had not reached out to a local parent advocacy group, Power to Parent, for help, I may never have gotten a meeting with the regional superintendent. 
and truly feel this incident would have been brushed under the rug. However, this meeting went really well, and I now have some hope that corrective action will happen. My daughter thinks the world of the teacher, and I and has raved about her, so it's not that I want her to get fired. That would devastate my daughter. I don't want to make a horrible situation worse. But she is struggling with this. I hope that you will reach out to me to let me know how you can help. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Evans, for taking time to come to the board meeting. Ms. Batista? Uh, 